Good morning. The Vashon Island Unitarian Universalists welcome you to our annual water ceremony. It'll be led by our minister, Reverend Victoria Poling, here in a bit. My name is Craig Hull. I use the pronouns he, him, and I'll be your service leader today. If you're visiting, please participate as you feel comfortable. You're invited to stay and introduce yourself in conversation following the service. There are a bunch of goodies over on the table, as you probably noticed, and some coffee. So stick around and say hello if you would. Our congregation is committed to individual freedom of belief, welcomes diversity, and seeks to promote a sense of community and fosters religion, which enriches the spirit. We are mostly a lay-led community, strengthened and enriched by weaving together the vol volunteer contributions of members and friends. Our community is supported and guided by our minister, Reverend Victoria. As we begin our service, please take a couple of breaths to become fully present, relax, and bring your attention into this moment of communal reflection and sharing. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Sabobj, Coast Salish native people. The Puyallup people have lived on and stewarded these lands since the beginning of time and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step toward true allyship and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous, peop indigenous people of this land and beyond. Since this is our first meeting um, of, the, of the year, I thought this, is, this would be especially apropos. So if you'll repeat after me, it is good. It is good to be. It is good to be here. It is good to be here together. I'd like to invite Vicki Claybaugh uh, to come up and light our chalice and read our chalice lighting words. Good morning. It is good to be here and see you all. Thank you. Um, the chalice word this morning are by Albert Zent Gyorgi, MD and discoverer of vitamin C. Water is life's matter and matrix, mother and medium. There is no life without water. I'm Reverend Victoria. It's so good to see all of you again for our first service of our congregational year, 2024-2025. A little bit about me, I use she, her pronouns. I identify as a Hispanic and white queer Pacific Northwesterner. And some of my favorite things are blue herons, peppermint tea, and lentil soup. As we begin our congregational year, this September we'll be exploring a theme all month on the practice of invitation. We have a lovely poster made by Vicki on our wall to remind us. So I'd like to offer you these opening words of invitation. What would it be like, I wonder, to enter into the flowing stream of your life, to encounter rocks and outcroppings, not as obstacles, but as invitations to change direction, to swirl a little, 
maybe even twirl and dance, leaning into the turn, sent off again into the current of your life force and energy that some call spirit, an energy and a flow that some call love. Come, let us say yes to this invitation to enter into this love that gathers many currents and many streams together with yours into a river opening up into the great sea of being where mystery and manifest meet. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Please rise in body or spirit for our first song, number 1064 in your teal hymnal, Blue Boat Home. Today we are celebrating in-gathering. In-gathering is when we come together again after our summer break. For some of you, there have been visits of family or travel. For some, there have been surgeries and caregiving responsibilities. Some young adults are beginning a new path after high school. However you've experienced your summer, in-gathering is a threshold time that marks a turn from our family and individual pursuits back into community time. Vashon Island UU has celebrated our yearly in-gathering with a water ceremony for many years. And the ceremony has sometimes changed a little from year to year in response to what we need now. You'll even hear me use several names for it today. Water ceremony, water ritual, water communion. And that's because there's no one way to refer in Unitarian Universalism to these ways that we gather to recognize something as sacred, as special. 
For those of you who are new here, and also for many who have been Unitarian Universalists for a while, it can be helpful to recall where our ceremonies come from, how this one in particular began, so that we might reflect on where we are now. So today's reading is the story of the original water ceremony in Unitarian Universalism. Once upon a time, in 1980, Two white Unitarian Universalist women, musician Carolyn McDade and Lucille Shuck Longview of Bellingham, were asked to create a worship service for the Women and Religion Continental Convocation of Unitarian Universalists. As they shaped that service, McDade and Longview wanted to create a new ritual that spoke to our connectedness to one another to the totality of life, and to our place on this planet. Remember, this is the 1980s. There was a real burgeoning of consciousness around uh, environmentalism then. And so they included a new inclusive symbol of women's spirituality, water. They wrote, water is more than simply a metaphor. It is elemental and primary calling forth feelings of awe and reverence. Acknowledging that the ocean is considered by many to be the place from which all life on our planet came, it is the womb of life, and that amniotic waters surround us prenatally, we now realize that this worship service was for us a new story of creation. So we chose water as our symbol of empowerment. So that service, which was held in the faraway land of East Lansing, Michigan, was called Coming Home Like Rivers to the Sea. And as its creators, McDade and Longview enacted their ritual in the liberating space of a semicircle around a large earthenware bowl. As its creators, they asked eight different women, each coming from diff distant places, to bring water, and they did. Water from the Rio Grande in the south, from the Assiniboine River in Canada, rainwater from Maryland, and water from both the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. These waters and many others were poured into the earthenware bowl as each bearer described the water's significance. As this ritual is continued, says Carolyn McDade, water deepens in meaning for us, just as water deepens during its long and winding journey to the sea. Let us give gratitude for the creators of this ritual and for the story of the water ceremony. Thank you, Leslie, for the beautiful music. Our bodies are bodies of water. 
45 to 75% of your body is water. Our bodies need clean water. And those of us who live here on Vashon and Mori Islands can hardly imagine life without the salty estuary water of the Salish Sea surrounding us. Wherever you go down the road, at some point you'll reach water. I just read that there's no point on the island that is farther than two miles away from the shoreline. So <laughs> you're pretty close. Water, water is life. The original peoples of this island knew this, and as we heard in our land acknowledgement, depended on these waters for their life ways on salmon and on other foods from the sea. Where I feel most viscerally that water is life, some of you know this about me, is I like to swim outdoors. And there's a lake that I just love over in Maple Valley, where the temperature's just right, even in the early evening. And the lake is large enough for the many people who go there, seeking relaxation, seeking connection with each other. And it's a wonderfully diverse place. There are so many different languages being spoken there. And people are talking and laughing, and there are eagles overhead, and there are ducks in the grass coming up to my blanket to see if I have snacks. <laughs> and as I enjoy the people sounds, I especially enjoy the kids running around and the laughter of teenagers who are excited and nervous about each other. At the lake, for me, for a time, I'm able to set aside concerns that are global, ones that I listen to in the news and also that happen in my community of poverty, of not having enough to eat, of violence and war. But I'm not able to set aside the effects of white privilege and ableism as I see how people interact with one another, seeking to create sanctuary for themselves as people are cooking and grilling their families' foods and playing their preferred music to create a cultural bubble of safety around themselves as a buffer against the dominant culture. I take these awarenesses with me into the lake, wondering what to respond to next in my own circle of connection and relationships, my own circle that includes us here at Vashon Island, Unitarian Universalists. I wonder how I might widen that circle and how I might hold folks in community whose life experiences and perspectives may at some times set us at odds with one another until we do the work of coming to understand each other. The lake doesn't give me answers to this, but the water gives me more life. It gives me more ease, an expanded heart and spirit with which to hold these questions. And when I wade into the water, I feel a rush of joy as I see the glint of the sun on those little ripples. You know the glint of the sun. When you take the ferry, you see it across the surface of the water. It's so magical. And I can feel a sense of relief and tension releasing from my shoulders as, you know, I sit at a desk all day. I let that go. And I also feel a sense of, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this as the squishy mud comes up into my sandals and my toes. And when I'm in, I'm in the water up to my waist, I have to take some deep breaths to calm myself and fill up with a little extra courage, because I need just a little bit extra to get all the way in the water. That's a knowing chuckle. <laughs> After years of swimming outdoors, I still need that little extra bit of courage every time. But as I slip into the water and swim off towards the center of the lake, I can feel my body settle into its element. My body is water, returning to water. As Carolyn McDade wrote, water is elemental and primary, calling forth feelings of awe and reverence. The Salish Sea has always been a special place for me. I was born in this region, and I've returned home again and again at various points in my life. And uh, I really consider this to be my home. 
This is where I belong. And as I've lived in communities around the Salish Sea, I've come to know and love many of the rivers there. For me, getting to know a place and learning to love it is how I maintain a commitment to care and to advocacy for the environment and for the people who are here. Years ago, when I studied environmental science in college, I learned from Aldo Leopold that when we learn to love something, we will work to protect it. So for today, for our water ceremony, I would like to honor the rivers of the Salish Sea with a song and chant. And I'd like to share this with you and teach this to you as my love offering to the Salish Sea and also I hope to inspire in you even more love for our home and to continue your own commitment to care and protection and to welcome of others who are new to this area to help folks learn about this place that we live in that is our home. So the story of this chant, this is called Salmon Come Back, is that I learned it many years ago on a tall ship, on the Schooner Adventurous. And it was recently gifted to me again by one of the songwriters who lives here on Vashon Island, Jackie Lown. Some of you may know her. And I didn't have it written anywhere, and I had lost the melody. So what to do? Well, fortunately, I knew a friend who happens to be kayaking with Jackie, and they were up in the Haida Gwaii. And so I texted him and said, can you put me in touch with Jackie? I'm looking for a song. Beca and because Vashon Islanders are, you know who you are, <laughs> within half an hour, I had a text message back with a recording of all of the kayakers singing me this song. <laughs> so we're going to try this together, and uh, I'm going to invite Runa to put our words up on screen. We might need a second. Uh, there are two parts. There's a singing part. It's very simple. The words are salmon, come back. And then there's a chant with all of the rivers. So we'll practice singing first, and then we'll practice the chant, and then we'll put them together. How does that sound? Yeah? Okay. So, uh, Leslie, if you can give us the melody for Sam and Come Back, we'll sing it all together. Sam and Come Back Sam good. And now the chant is in the same rhythm. So I'll start. You can join me when you feel ready. And uh, these are the, many of these rivers have native names. And so if you need to just listen to hear how it's pronounced a few times, that is fine. So the chant goes like this. Hama, hama, duck of bush, dosi wallops, quillacine, dungeness, gray wolf, elwa. Fraser, Nooksack, Skagit, Stilaguamish, Snohomish, Duwamish, Puyallup, Nisqually, Skokomish. <laughs> Shall we do it one more time? Okay, okay. Hama, Hama, Duck of Bush, Dosi Wallops, Quillacine, Dungeness, Gray Wolf, Elwa. Fraser, Nooksack, Skadsitstilla, Guamish, Snohomish, Duwamish, Puyallup, Nisqually, Skokomish. All right. <laughs> now we get to put them together, and um, I think we'll, we'll start with this side singing and this side chanting, and then we'll switch. How's that? Okay. All right. Um, why don't we have you start singing first and then we'll jump in. Okay. Salmon come back. Hama, hama, duck a bush, dosi wallops, quillacine, 
Dungeness, Grey Wolf, Elwash. Fraser, Nooksack, Skaljit, Stilla, Guamish, Snohomish, Duwamish, Puelip, Nisqually, Skokomish, and now I'll switch. Salmon, come back. Hamma, hamma, duck a bush, dosi wallops, quillacine, dungeness, gray wolf, elwash. Fraser, nook sacks, gadget still a guamish, snohomish, duwamish, puallop, nisqually, skokomish. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'd just like to make a little geographic note that the order is from the south, and it goes clockwise around the Salish Sea. So there's a, 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 a rhythm, there's a reason for the order of the rivers. So now you know. And uh, if you want the lyrics, I, I'll put them in the e-news. Just because I think this would be a great thing to have. All right. So now that we have named our waters and called the salmon back to our rivers, they're, they're out there in the sound. They're getting ready to swim up the rivers. Uh, now we get to swim up our own river and begin our welcoming water ceremony today. This version of the ceremony was created by Reverend Allison Palm. Now, uh, some of you I know got cards when you came in. Is there anyone who didn't get a card to write the name of your body of water? Uh, let's see. Uh, Vicki, would you kindly pass around cards to those with their hands up? Thank you. There we go. And so you'll just write the name of the body of water that you would like to honor and just maybe one or two things about why it's important to you. It feels particularly apt to start our month of September on the theme of invitation with a ritual designed to invite us into our community. Many of you have brought water today for our water communion. That water may come from a tap in your kitchen, from the shoreline down the street, or maybe from somewhere farther away. And we have plenty of water here for anyone who just came as you are today. There's water for everyone, no matter where you've come from or where you are on your journey to the sea. We welcome you into this beloved community. Before we gather our waters together, I'd like us to take a moment to reflect on what feels inviting. And you can close your eyes if you like or just find something neutral to look at. I realize some of you are now writing. So we'll just take a pause. Visualize that what, would feel, what feels inviting to you. Imagine it's the first time you've come into this congregation. And maybe it actually is your first time today. Maybe your first visit was many, many years ago. But for just this moment, imagine you're walking in for the first time. What do you see in your mind's eye as you approach the building? Who greets you as you walk in the door? How are you welcomed into the space? Now imagine you're welcomed in just the way that you like. Some of you might like a big hug and a smile. Some of you might like a little bit of gentle, polite reserve. Whatever it is, that's particular to you. And I wonder, in this space, are you welcome with open minds, with some acceptance and curiosity and wondering? Are you welcomed with loving hearts, with kindness and caring? Are you welcomed with helping hands, with help to navigate this new space?
Now I also invite you to set an intention. How will you be welcoming this year? Will you welcome with an open mind? With a loving heart? With helping hands? Now go ahead and bring your awareness back into this space and you can open your eyes if you've closed them and sit for a moment with what you've visualized and experienced. And those of you who need a second to write on your card, go ahead and do that and we'll collect them. What body of water would you like to honor and why is it important to you? And what we'll do in a moment is I'm going to invite you to come forward with your water while I read from the cards the names of the bodies of water and why they're important. And uh, our Wonderful assistance with the service. Uh, Craig and Donna are going to help us as ushers to help folks come forward. We'll start with the front row and then move to the next row and then the, keep going back. And I'm going to ask you to come down the center and then go back around to the sides just because it's a small space. This will help us um, have enough room to move. And if you don't have any water, there is a pitcher right here. There is water for everyone. Just pour in a little. And you can hold that place in your heart that's special to you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's have our first row come on forward. There's water today from our well, because this water is life. Water from Lake of the Woods, Michigan, to immerse myself in a feeling of being safe and free. Today we have water from Snow Lake. Water from KVI Beach, the lapping waves. From the River Thames in London. from the water in Shingle Mill Creek. Water from the Pacific Ocean. From the Mori Aquifer. This water sustains my life and my garden. This is water from the Salish Sea via District 19. <laughs> With gratitude. I see you know a lot about your water and where it comes from. <laughs> water from Lake Cayuga, New York. From Wing Haven. Forgive me if I mispronounce this, from Lake Otsego, New York. Oh, here's water from the new hot tub. <laughs> Burton water. We've been working two plus years to form a cooperative and manage our water. Congratulations, folks. Continuing the advocacy. This is water from any gurgling creek with pure water and singing birds and sunshine. The Pacific Ocean, because it connects to our Puget Sound water that gives Vashon a special home. 
from the Nile River, the Jordan River, and the Dead Sea. They are the lifeblood of their countries and Egypt and Jordan. North Lake Taps and the Light. Honoring the gift of water collected from Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens, important as a source that provides crops and all creatures with the nourishment to sustain us. This is family water, Buffalo, Buffalo Bayou, Looking, Looking Glass Falls. Oh, there are a number of places here. Northport Harbor. I'm struggling with the handwriting, sorry. Charles River, a harbor, a lagoon, and San Francisco Bay. You could tell me later what these were. <laughs> From the Duwamish River, representing renewal and repair. From Outer Quartermaster, it is the source of mysterious happenings that sometimes happen, one of which happened last Wednesday night. That mystery may or may not be revealed here this morning. Whoa. Suspenseful. From West Side, Fern Cove, and Shingle Mill Creek. Welcoming hands and open heart. Lake Sammamish. My brother and I often rode our bikes around this lake. Water is life. From Judd Creek, which brings a place for the fish to return, a spawning ground, an environment for insects and bugs. Payette Lake, Idaho, which is my childhood paradise. Milford Lake where I spent the love of my life, where I met the love of my life 65 years ago. There's another name of Lake Waku, Lake Wahoo? Wabi, thank you, Lake Wabi. <laughs> now we know who it is. <laughs> the rivers and streams that join to form our oceans. Water is everything from bird baths to clean oceans. The water incorporated in artwork throughout the world. Drum Point Lake, a family and childhood spot for five generations of memories. The Puget Sound. Water, a magical tool. Reflective pond surface, solid ice or fluid. My pure pleasure, morning bird bath and watercolor painting. our Vashon Aquifer and our well. Oglala Lake, Nebraska, a pond in my home. Shingle Mill Creek, water is life and salmon. Let it flow freely. Without water, we wouldn't be here. We live by this. This is water that brought much joy when three of us went skinny dipping. <laughs> water is life. Thank you for sharing your honoring of the waters. Our bowl is full, and it has that lovely, slightly green tinge. I would like to invite you to bless this water with me. And I have some words that we'll bring up here on screen that we'll get to say together. Like water, it takes its own time to the screen. This water is sacred water. It is water consecrated by our stories and our commitments to welcoming. I invite you now to hold out a hand or two towards the water as we bless it together. This water 
represents our church community, a community of welcome. We bless this water and our community with abundance. May we always know that we are enough and we have enough for all. We bless this water and our community with courage. May we stand bravely in the face of injustice. May we step boldly into the unknown. We bless this water and our community with wisdom. May we know when to speak and when to listen. May we be ready and willing to learn from one another. We bless this water and our community with joy. May we take pleasure in being with one another. May we remember to laugh and sing. We bless this water and our community with love. May we always know, no matter how hard life gets, that we are not alone. May it be so. Please join me in rising in body or spirit to sing hymn number 1007 in your teal hymnal, There's a River Flowing in My Soul. There's a river We'll now pause our recording as we prepare our hearts for joys and concerns. Thank you for your generosity. Our closing words this morning are by Kaylee Rice, called All Rivers 
run to the sea. It starts with a drop, then a trickle. A burble, a rush of water, bubbling towards this destination, and finally the wide, endless sea. All rivers run to the sea. Today you brought water and poured it into a common bowl. Though our experiences have differed, these waters mingle, signifying our common humanity. Today you came and shared in this community. May you depart this sacred space, hearts filled with hope for new beginnings, a fresh start. Go forth, but return to this community where rivers of tears can be shed, where dry souls are watered, where your joy bubbles and your cup overflows, where deep in your spirit you have found in this place a home. All rivers run to the sea. Donna, would you please come forward for the extinguishing of our chalice? I misunderstood my role today. <laughs> so I had actually the same reading that Victoria had. So I'm just gonna say that um, we, we extinguish this chalice with the belief that deep in our spirit we found this place as a home and all rivers run to the sea. Ring. <laughs> Thanks to Leslie and, and Runa. You did great, Runa. Thank you. <laughs>